Alright guys, so you know when I made that one yarn wig video? Well, I'm going to be doing another one right now. And the one that actually shows the process of me making a wig. Like, almost all of it. So, let's begin I guess. I already did this off camera, but I painted my wig cap, this was black, sort of a white color because I'm gonna be making a white wig and I don't want it to be black, whatever you, if there are any spaces. So yeah, I painted it white with fabric paint and I'm gonna start with this yarn. I, I like to wrap it around my hand. Um, I'm doing the front of the wig right now, which will be this part right in here, that little, well, it'll be like almost all of this, but we're gonna do this little circle part, I mean, semi circle part first, which will be like, whatever right there anyway so we gotta first cut the yarn so we just uh i like to wrap it around and if you want the front to be long then i can use like this part of the hand right here and wrap it around sort of loosely not cutting off any circulation or anything because that'd be bad and it doesn't really matter how many times you wrap it around just enough to, to, for it to be a lot and uh, enough for you to be able to cut it because it's too thick it's not gonna be able to cut especially if you have crappy scissors so just cut and we have some yarn you're gonna want to keep doing that until you have a bunch and you'll probably want to re, uh, do this step again and again, but using shorter lengths, like you'll probably want some that are right here instead of like on this part of the thicker part of your hand. And yeah, basically just try and think about how hair works. My hair right here is longer than my hair right here. So on the wig, I'm going to have the hair in the front longer than the hair on the sides. So yes. Also, if you have a wig, please check it out because it's just a random wig that I have. It's new. I did not make this one, but if you look at a wig, I'm turning it inside out, it has this part, which is the front, and basically what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be sewing, kind of like this, um, all in the front, very thick, since this is thick, and then in the back, I'm going to have lines. But, so, yeah, it's pretty cool, right? So you're going to want it to look kind of like this. It doesn't have to look exactly like this, but this is honestly a really good template. Just, it's good to have an idea of how, like, professional wigs are made. But yeah, you just got to keep doing the, this thing. So just keep doing this, I guess. <laughs> And honestly, I'm just doing, like, some extra stuff right now. I probably won't be using this length until way later. But, yes, you can do that however you want. So now that we've got a bunch of this, we got to tie knots in this stuff. Um, for wigs, I like to do single one, one piece and just tie a knot in the middle. And you want to do that for every single one of these things. So this is one reason why this is such a time-consuming process, because it's, you have to do things. See a knot? Alrighty, so I want to show you another thing that might make this go a little faster. Uh, as far as the tying and brushing and straightening process goes, I have learned a new thing. Basically, you're going to want to have a, another piece of yarn. This yarn will be for basically keeping track of everything and keeping... It'll make it a little easier and faster. Um, so here's some stuff I've already done. It's black for a black-haired wig. Um, it's already brushed and already straightened. And I just kept it on the... Uh, the string and i'm gonna keep it on the string until i am starting a new black wig and it's just going to make things so much easier and less everywhere so i'm going to show you how to do this just how i brush and straighten everything so here we go we have our yarn all cut and prepped nah, I'll get right there. and so here's the string i'm just gonna, just gonna tie the string the yarn onto the other yarn <laughs> make sure it's tight you can tie it twice, but I've actually found that when you tie it t twice, it comes undone usually. Unless you're really careful when brushing, and honestly you should be kind of careful when brushing, just so you don't brush the uh, knot out. That's the only thing about this um, way of doing it, is that you can brush the knot out whenever you're brushing everything at once. So I'm just going to keep tying these on here, and slide them over, and I'm going to try and keep all of the knots on one side, like on the top, so they're not just random, so I can keep track of if I'm brushing the knots out or not. So here. Alright, so, we've got our little bundle, and I'll usually do a lot of bundles on one piece of yarn, and then once I finish that, I'll just brush them all, and once I finish brushing them all, I'll straighten them all, all on this piece of, uh, this piece of yarn. And so, we've got our little bundle right here, and you want to have a, oh, this has got, <laughs> it's got pieces of uh, brush on it. You want to have a cat brush. I like this one the best. It costs a little more than my other one, but just a metal, a metal wired brush that is good at separating the fibers of the yarn. You want to have that at this point and something to brush out your yarn onto. Um, an old pair of jeans. These actually are all ripped up in places like <laughs> they're, they're done. I'm not wearing them again, basically. So I'm going to be brushing it on 
this, pajama pants, pillows, whatever you want to use to brush it out on, as long as you're not brushing it out on your pants or yourself because you don't really want to be stabbed with little wire bristles, I'm sure. So, we're just gonna, just gonna start brushing this out. I'm gonna start at the end. Making sure to unravel all of the yarn. Leaving no yarn unraveled. <sighs> Getting as close to the knot as possible without actually undoing the knot. And actually sort of protecting the knot with my fingernail. I do not want to unravel it. Oh, it's so fluffy. So very fluffy. Alright. That looks okay. Alright, now that we've done this, we can now straighten it. <laughs> Funny story, I accidentally um did this without recording. It's just so sick of nature now, apparently. But um here is my hair straightener! Yay! I don't actually use it to straighten my hair hardly because my hair is too short. So short that I don't really care anymore. But here we are. Um basically I have it on the lowest setting, but I don't know, it, I've done it on the high setting and it's been fine. Just as long as you don't like keep doing it, like keeping it on the thing. I do like quick little Little swipes. And then when you're finished, it should look something like this. A lot different than the uh, little fluff ball we just had, but this is this is the uh, end result. All right, so here is an example of a piece of yarn in which I've tied a bunch of other pieces that kind of like this. I've tied those on here and then brushed them and then straightened them. I have these in groups of ten. Um, for the straightening, and then I had them in groups of five for the brushing just because it's easier for you to brush a smaller number and it just makes things go a little bit faster. So it's easier to straighten, like around ten, than it is to brush ten. So, I'm just gonna start straightening. You should be getting stuff that looks kind of like, like this, except one piece will be looking like somewhat like this, differing lengths for where you're going to be placing the hair, how long you're going to be wanting your wig, and all of that. So, I already technically started at this point, because I'm Heather from the future at this point, but, um, yeah, I'll go ahead and show you how to sew this on. Alright, so, you want a needle, one that's not too big, one that's not too small. I don't really know that much about needles, but I just... Use one that I like, so use one that you like, and I'm using white thread. I usually like it to not be too thin, otherwise it'll it'll have more of a chance of just breaking and pieces of your hair from your wig falling out. So I don't like that. Also, I like it to be relatively long because I'm going to be probably sewing a lot of hair in. This isn't that much, but I also have more right here. I sew a lot of hair in at one time, and I would rather not get more thread. But you don't want to have it too much, that'll be cumbersome. You also will want good scissors. I, my good pair of scissors broke, so I'm using this crappy little kit here. But it'll just have to do. Alright. So I do a double thread. And then knot it at the end. So once we do that knot a few times, we're going to go through the back of the wig. You can flip it out if you want. Flip it inside out if you would like. But go through the back of the wig. And then you're going to go through the front, to, like going towards the back again. And I like to get it through there. And so now it's it's not going to come out of there unless you pull it really hard and you end up ripping the mesh, which would suck. Um, but then you'll want to get it back through on the side that you're going to be putting the hair, because you don't want hair on the side that's going to be under on the underside. Ha! Huh, logic! Also, it's like 1 right now, so pardon me. I have my retainer in, so that's why I'm a little bit of a lisp. Alright, but, alright. <laughs> you got your first piece of hair. What you're gonna do, is you know that, that little, that little knot right there? I'm gonna flip that through that knot. And just pull. When you do that, it'll get closer to there, and you can just 
Here's our wig head for next. Here we get our wig head. <laughs> That's how hair works. Totally. Now this wig head is a little smaller than most people's heads. A little smaller than mine. So it's not always accurate. One second. I actually... Okay, so it's on the top, so that's good. Okay, okay. Alright. Let's do this. So. What we want to do is we got it pulled tight. Gonna get a piece of hair. Go through the knot. Pull it tight. Then go through the mesh. And then you can just kind of go through it and then back up. And with a wig head on. So, you don't actually have to pull it through twice. Just do it in one swoop. But then, you just keep repeating the step. Cut your hair. Stick it through the knot. Pull it tight. But not too tight. Because then it'll be hard. You want it to be tight, but not really have that much slack. Or and not, like, make the, the mesh sort of wavy and ruffly. Sorry if I can't explain things. Apparently. But you just want to... Keep doing that. Make sure that no hair gets um, stuck in the thread as you're pulling it. The longer it is, the easier that is for it to happen. If you're really afraid of your um, your hair is coming out, buffs, then what you can do is, at this point, you can actually pierce through the uh, knot again. Just in case. So it's really in there. And you'll want to do it the same direction, not the opposite direction. If you did the opposite direction, then there's a chance it might come undone. Alright, so that's how you do it. Um, once you get ready to be finished, uh, you can... I'll do one more. One more. This one, I'll do it. Double. And go through the back. Now, to tie this off, what you want to do is you have this. I want to make a knot. So I'll just go through the mesh again, then go through the circle that that makes. And then it will basically be a knot. But you want to cut it with enough to tie it off. So that should be enough. Maybe a little more than enough. But better safe than sorry. I just wanna do a little knot. I'm really bad at this. Do a little knot. Maybe do it a, more than once. Just to be safe. And you can cut off the excess. Then you can start somewhere else, or take a break, or start a new row, or you don't actually have to stop. Or you can renew your thread, or whatever. But that's basically what I'm gonna be doing for a long time. And on this little part right here, I actually like to have it thick. The most thick part will be this part. This uh, wig will be for probably Danny Phantom. <laughs> so, I want it to be super anime and sticky up in the front because, you know, Danny Phantom. And it's probably going to be relatively thick up here too, but not as thick. It's going to have more space between each row. So, instead of it being like right here, it would be like up here a little bit more. So, just think about how thick you want your hair to be on the sides and the back. You're not going to want your hair as thick because... If you look, if you look at my hair, for example, I have more hair that's longer up here, and the stuff on my sides is a lot shorter, and not as poofy. And if it's poofy, it, like, gets in the way of your ears, and it's really hard to put glasses on. That's why I like getting haircuts, otherwise my hair really annoys me. And the back, unless you want your character to have really poofy hair in the back, then just think about how, um, thick you're doing your wefts. How, how far apart you're placing them, and the length, because they both factor in. Alright, good luck. I'm just going to continue. It's going to be a huge speed lapse thing, hopefully, so...
Alright, so at this point, I've actually gotten pretty far on the wig. I've got most of the front done, and it's it's really fluffy now, wow. Uh, <laughs> lots of hair, but it's only about halfway through, um, maybe a little more than halfway. Alright, so I just wanted to show you what I did. Um, I made lines where all of the wefts are going to be. Uh, I am still learning, <laughs> forever learning, about this process. So, this is how uh, far apart I'm going to do the wefts for the back. It might, might actually need to be spaced a little further apart or further together, but I think this will work. Um, yeah. And basically, I just, again, reference the wefts on this wing. So, yeah, they're about the same. I suggest making the lines on here with, like, a silver sharpie. I did not have one, so I just used a black one.